My uh, name is Walt Johnson and I live in uh, Ben Lomond and I'm the grandfather of uh, the cameraman Alejandro who was interviewing me about uh, life on the home front during uh, World War II. I was 11 years old when uh, Pearl Harbor was uh, attacked and uh, I have uh, very vivid memories uh, of uh, what it was like and what our responses were uh, to the war on the home front and, uh, and abroad as the years went on until uh, 1945 and the war finally came to an end. What was the day like uh, on December 7th, 1941, when you heard uh, Pearl Harbor uh, had been attacked by the Japanese? December 7th, uh, 1941, was uh, a, very, a very beautiful day uh, in San Francisco. It was, even though it was December, it was uh, sunny, and I was at a uh, neighbor's house when we heard on the radio, remember now this, uh, there was no television, mm -hmm. uh, we heard on the radio that uh, Pearl Harbor had been attacked by the Japanese, a great loss of life uh, to uh, the American Navy especially. And it was, of course, uh, a, great, a great shock. It's uh, hard to describe how shocking that uh, it was uh, for everybody. And, uh, Neighbors started t t talking about it. It was on the radio, and then uh, it was that night that uh, President Franklin D. Roosevelt issued his famous uh, speech in which he said that December seventh would live as a day of infamy, and uh, and often we'd see film of that uh, during uh, uh, during the war. The uh, it it just galvanized the population on Monday men lined up at the various military recruiting offices, often uh, all the way down the street. What was the fear like in a city like San Francisco after Pearl Harbor? Right after Pearl Harbor there was great fear in the city uh, that the uh, Japanese would get, and of course they were called at those time, at that time, uh, Japs uh, was almost the immediate uh, tag for them because it was a shorter name for headlines and also uh, it was a very negative word uh, that fitted with uh, what was uh, our uh, our enemies and uh, anyway the uh, uh, there was fear that the Japanese would come right up the beaches of California and uh, on the San Francisco Peninsula uh, barbed wire was set up uh, there were uh, soldiers were uh, sentries out there uh, it, uh, it it seems sort of odd now because uh, the, uh, the Japanese could hardly have uh, kept up a supply line for an invasion at that time after the surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. But that uh, that's hindsight now, and that was that was not the feeling. Uh, there there was a feeling uh, of uh, their coming, mm -hmm. and uh, and it was alarming. What were actions that uh, citizens were, uh, were inclined to take to uh, help the war effort? Uh, help the war effort uh, began uh, growing what were called victory gardens. So in front of uh, San Francisco houses, even those uh, with uh, very small lawns out in front, uh, were turned into uh, little... Uh, growing patches for uh, vegetables and food and this was so other food that was harvested on the farms could be sent to American troops and so almost everybody had a victory garden larger ones in the in the backyards of course and it, w it was quite common uh, to uh, uh, see this. In addition uh, we started saving uh, uh, bacon fat in cans uh, because this was used, uh, in, transformed uh, to be used in various weapons, uh, to, turned, into, uh, uh, turned into grease. And uh, we were very conscious, uh, mild food rationing started uh, 
it was a relatively big deal to us that you could only get so much sugar, for example, but uh, that was never a great uh, hardship. We were not uh, we were not starving as some of the poor people in other parts of the world were because of the war and the, the war coming right into their uh, uh, their midst. In addition, uh, people uh, became uh, what were called air war air raid wardens. Uh, my aunt, for instance, uh, had a white helmet, and when there was a blackout because uh, radar had detected planes and uh, didn't know the identity of those planes, uh, she would go around her neighborhood, uh, there were bl block wardens, and she'd make sure that either the lights were out or the shades were drawn very tightly. Time, how did most Americans feel about Japanese internment? And uh, you, looking back on it now, how how do you feel about it? Well, about Japanese in internment, at the time, uh, I remember being with my parents, and we went to uh, buy a racetrack called Ten Foran that uh, no longer exists. It's now a shopping center, uh, just south of San Francisco. And at that time, uh, Japanese Americans had been rounded up and they were uh, taken, among other places, to this uh, Tan Foran before they were shipped out farther east uh, to uh, internment camps. And the attitude of, of my parents, I, I couldn't help sharing, is that uh, there was no injustice about this. Uh, in, in later years we had other, other thoughts about it because uh, th there was a feeling that uh, we, the Anglo-Caucasian Americans, just didn't know which side, if those Japanese troops came, which side would these Japanese be on? Uh, the uh, side that uh, where their mothers and fathers and grandmothers and grandfathers came from, or would they be uh, with Americans. And uh, when finally a uh, military unit was formed, the 442nd Combat Team, which became one of the most decorated units in World War II, uh, they were Japanese uh, American soldiers, and they were all sent to Europe, uh, just in case, I guess, that uh, they wouldn't uh, go to the front where the fighting was on with the Japanese, but they had a sterling war record. Since that time, I have, uh, I w I'm a retired teacher, so I have taught with uh, Japanese Americans. I, I know others, they're my, they're my friends, and I realize that even uh, uh, Governor Earl Warren of California, uh, he, he, even he, uh, who had uh, become a, a Supreme Court Justice, he regretted uh, approving that decision uh, m much later in life, that this was uh, a very unfair kind of decision. And then those uh, Japanese who were interned did a magnificent job after the war coming back and, and recovering. If, for instance, I knew uh, uh, four brothers who all started a nursery in Fremont, California, with the Kitayama brothers, which became very successful, and in their youth they were all interned in uh, Utah, uh, and uh, they uh, they came back. They, were they a little bitter about uh, what had happened? Well, yes, but uh, in large measure they had overcome it, and there was a change in attitude by their fellow citizens. Not that prejudice has gone away, as you well know. Uh, perhaps in some form or another, it will always be with us and is in all societies, uh, unfortunately, but it's, it's better now. In the days I'm talking about, of course, the uh, army, for example, was segregated. Uh, black troops were separate, uh, and they were not, the army was not uh, unified racially, uh, 
until uh, I think about 1945, until uh, the the war had actually uh, ended. Uh, president Harry Truman, uh, who had become president, uh, ended that so that uh, now, of course, uh, black and white uh, uh, soldiers and, and uh, Asian American soldiers are all in the American uh, uh, in the American military. How did uh, American morale boost after uh, turning battles that really turned the tide in the war, such as uh, Iwo Jima and D-Day? The battles of the war were very well covered by the American press. Uh, of course, the carnage and the uh, death and mutilation of American soldiers was not uh, played up. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, what we know about it now visually, of course, uh, comes from uh, movies that have been uh, all, the, all the years uh, since. Uh, but uh, it wasn't uh, entirely a rosy picture, although uh, the movies were rather triumphant in terms of American accomplishments and victories. Uh, for example, uh, 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 Iwo Jima uh, was well known and uh, covered uh, by the uh, uh, by the newspapers and uh, and, ma and magazines. But uh, day by day, it was the daily newspapers that were doing it. And one thing that helped, of course, a great deal make uh, Iwo Jima famous was the flag raising on Mount Suribachi. Uh, that was done by Joe Rosenthal, who uh, was a San Francisco Chronicle uh, hey, hey. photographer. And that uh, picture that he took, of course, is, uh, is iconic. It's even uh, uh, the bronze uh, reproduction uh, of the flag raising is uh, in, wa in Washington, uh, uh, Washington, D.C. And uh, so that, that became uh, uh, very famous. And then the... Uh, uh, the movies were promoting uh, other battles. Uh, Wake Island was an early one, for example, which was uh, an island uh, somewhat north of the Hawaiian Islands that fell uh, first uh, to the, the, the Japanese. And there was a, a movie about that, and there was a movie about various uh, naval victories, such as the Battle of Midway and the Coral Sea. And uh, the uh, in Europe, uh, when the war ended uh, on uh, VE Day, there was great jubilation not only in San Francisco, but across the country, and not only in the big cities, but of course every everywhere. People came out in the streets, and uh, uh, and they were uh, uh, just o overjoyed that, that that part of the war had ended. And the troops who were there, who had uh, survived the war, and were, were lucky to, to have done that, they faced uh, what they thought, uh, and that could well have, been, have happened, they thought they were going out to the Pacific to reinforce the American military out there and force the final defeat of J Japan. And so uh, uh, there was a little bit of uh, demoralization in the, uh, in the ranks uh, about that. They, didn't exactly look uh, look forward to that. Um, what was the news like when you heard uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki have, uh, you know, the atomic bombs were dropped? The reactions to the dropping of the atomic bomb, uh, it is usually said uh, at the by the authorization of President uh, Harry Truman, but. Uh, uh, that apparently may not be quite true, that uh, he may have uh, simply let the military make the decision, which uh, all might amount to the same thing. But uh, the uh, reaction uh, was very favorable, uh, despite the uh, terrible destruction to men, uh, women, and children, uh, because uh, the American forces and uh, British and Australia and uh, with them, uh, they faced a massive loss of life if they were going to invade the Japanese mainland. Uh, Japan was a warrior society and uh, they would be committed to 
go on fighting. Uh, they were uh, they were imbued with this uh, uh, as a uh, as a culture, and uh, the invasion beaches were actually all mapped out, uh, just as they were for Normandy, and the invasion of uh, uh, Europe, and then along came uh, uh, came the bombs, and uh, Japan did not surrender after the first one. But a few days later, after Nagasaki was bombed, and then uh, uh, a few days after that, uh, Japan did surrender. Uh, do you think it was it was justified the whole thing? Well, uh, Alejandro, that's uh, that's the most difficult question that uh, you have asked me in this interview, and. Uh, as to whether uh, those uh, that massive destruction uh, was justified, uh, I'm going to have to say that I think it was, uh, but I'm I'm open to arguments the other way. It has become a debatable topic. Uh, one of the reasons I feel, uh, as I just described, is that there was. Uh, tremendous loss of life already from aerial bombing. It was uh, nothing new after Europe and uh, earlier bombings of mainland Japan, as, uh, as a matter of fact. And uh, of course I don't like to think about little children and uh, women or, you know, or what could be my, my family being just wiped out and then the tremendous radiation that uh, is so devastating. Uh, I don't uh, I don't like my opinion uh, in a way, but uh, if somebody uh, wants to disagree with it, I'll I'll I'll, I'll listen to it. Uh, I'm I'm just not exultant uh, about it all. Uh, what was the feeling? Uh around uh, the U.S. when uh, the Japanese officially surrendered on the USSS Missouri? Oh, there was a great feeling of re release because Americans knew that finally, after all the long war years, their husbands, uh, uncles, uh, cousins, uh, and in some cases, because there were there were there were women indeed in, in the service, uh, their their aunts and uh, other relations would finally be coming home, and would be coming home to a hope of a peaceful America in, in a peaceful uh, in a peaceful world. And uh, I have uh, visited the. Uh, a deck of the great uh, battleship, uh, the USS Missouri, uh, and uh, seen where, uh, under those mighty guns, uh, the peace treaty was finally signed with uh, General Douglas MacArthur and the uh, and the Japanese uh, uh, officials uh, dressed in very formal formal attire with the uh, sailors. Uh, hanging all over uh, the sides, uh, the insides there uh, of the ship uh, uh, looking looking down uh, on this. And uh, another thing to see in Pearl Harbor is uh, just below the surface, the sunken Arizona, where some uh, 2,000 bodies, including uh, one of my distant relatives, are uh, are still down there. And the Arizona is now a memorial. And for those of you uh, who haven't been there uh, to Pearl Harbor, uh, I'm sure that you would enjoy it. Uh, the great drama. You know, looking looking back on the war, um, you know, since since you lived it, um, what kind of you know what kind of uh, feelings do you get uh, that aren't that you get from history books and from actually living it, you know, like what's the, what's the difference between, you know, actually living in the history, I guess, uh, and also, you know, with all the carnage that came from World War Two, uh, the millions, hundreds of millions of lives lost, uh, 
did it change at all your opinion on war? And yeah. When I look back on the war, of course, uh, as uh, I guess this interview has demonstrated, I have many, uh, many memories. And uh, the memories are quite vivid as opposed to just reading about them. For example, driving through San Francisco and seeing the little flags in the window with blue stars that showed that you had somebody who was in the war, who was in service. And those blue stars, if uh, uh, a man or woman would be killed, would turn to gold. They'd be replaced by a gold star. And uh, as the uh, war went on, of course, more and more blue stars became gold stars, and uh, just uh, uh, the thought of that uh, is very much uh, in my mind. Uh, since that time, my, my general uh, uh, feelings about war uh, are that uh, I, I think wars are inevitable. I don't, I don't want to be a pessimist entirely. I admire people who work for peace, and they, and they should. Uh, but history is uh, a long catalog of uh, warfare. Uh, I myself have uh, um, been in the army. I was in uh, just after the Korean War uh, wound down. So I'm familiar with the, uh, military things and uh, I think that uh, we have to have a very uh, strong uh, military uh, defense force that we do, uh, that it's an absolute uh, uh, necessity, and uh, I, I hope that isn't too, uh, uh, too grim a picture, and what I think what we all hope for is at least some relative peace and not catastrophic conflict uh, throughout the world, but it's uh, it's hard, and uh, as with the future, we don't know what's uh, going to happen, and uh, we just have to uh, uh, wait and see. Uh, and I want to uh, thank you for listening to me uh, during this uh, interview. I I hope it was uh, informative. Thank you.